Hello, I am Mrs. Fawbush in fourth grade, and I am going to be reading chapter 12. There's one, I raced across the street. Is it for Willie? Toby called, darting across after me. I squinted up at the sign nailed on the telephone pole. Nope, I sat on the curb and put my chin in my hands. Another cat. So far, the only signs we'd seen since yesterday had been for lost cats and yard sales. Toby sat down beside me. Maybe we should look downtown, he said. Maybe she didn't put any signs around here. Maybe, I said, but that seems kind of dumb to me. I mean, wouldn't you start in your own neighborhood? Me and Toby had been up and down Whitmore Road and nearly every street close by about a million times. There wasn't one single sign for Willie. I just didn't get it. Why wouldn't that lady put up a sign? Let's go back over to Whitmore Road one more time, I said. Toby skipped along beside me, humming. He didn't seem one little bit worried. We'd had Willie for almost two whole days now, and I was feeling worse by the hour. My dog-stealing plan had seemed so good when I'd first thought of it. Everything had gone just perfect in my head. We steal the dog, we find the sign, we take the dog home, we get the money, the end. But now things didn't seem to be going so perfect. When we got to Whitmore Road, I turned to Toby. Remember, I said, act normal. Don't look guilty or anything. Okay. We strolled along the edge of the road, looking at fence posts, telephone poles, anything that might have a sign on it. And then we heard someone calling from behind us. Willie! Toby looked at me all wide-eyed. What should we do? He whispered. Before I could answer, that fat lady was walking toward us. Hey, she called to me and Toby. Uh, hey, I said and set a smile on my face. Her shorts went swish, swish, swish as she walked. A bright pink t-shirt stretched over her big stomach. Even her feet were fat, bulging over the sides of her yellow flip-flops. Have y'all have seen a dog, she said. She was breathing hard and clutching her heart like she was going to fall over dead any minute. Nope, Toby practically yelled. I glared at him, then turned back to the lady. What does it look like, I said, squeezing my eyebrows together in a worried way. He's about this big, she held her hands up to show us. He's white with a black eye patch and his name is Willie. Then she started crying real hard, like the way little kids cry. I'm sorry, she said, swiping at tears. I just can't even imagine where he could be. Maybe he ran away, Toby said. Before I could poke him, the lady said, no, not Willie. Her face crumpled up and she had another full out crying spell. I liked to died when she did that. And then, as if I wasn't feeling bad enough, she said, what if something bad's happened to him? Before I could stop myself, I said, you want me and Toby to help you look for him? She sniffed and nodded, would you? Sure, I poked Toby. Right, Toby? He nodded. Yeah, right, he said. The lady smiled and pulled a tissue out of the pocket of her shorts. She blew her nose, then stuffed the tissue back in her pocket. Strands of damp hair clung to her splotchy red cheeks. Do y'all live around here? She said. Me and Toby looked at each other. Uh, sort I said. I mean, yeah, we live over that way. I pointed in the direction of the street where our car was parked. That wasn't lying, right? I live right there, she pointed to her house. I'll show y'all Willie's picture, okay? Me and Toby followed her up the walk to the house. At the door, she turned and said, my name's Carmela, by the way, Carmela Whitmore. I'm Georgina, I said, that's my brother, Toby. I'll be right back, she said, then disappeared into the darkness of the house. I pushed my face against the screen and peered inside. My stomach did a flip-flop. I pressed my face closer to the screen to make sure I was seeing right. I was. The inside of that house wasn't one little bit like I'd imagined it would be. Ever since I'd first laid eyes on 27 Whitmore Road, I'd pictured rooms with glittering crystal chandeliers and fancy furniture. I'd imagined a thick, silky carpet covered with roses and paintings on the walls. Those fancy kind with swirly gold frames, like in museums. I'd even pictured a servant lady bringing in tea and cookies on a silver tray. But what I saw when I peered through the door was a dark and dreary room filled to bursting with all kinds of junky stuff piles of newspapers and clothes, boxes and dishes, no chandeliers, no fancy furniture. Carmela came out of a back room carrying a small silver picture frame. Here's Willie, she said, joining me and Toby on the porch and handing me the picture. There was Willie, looking out at me from that silver frame, smiling his doggy smile. He sure is cute, I made myself say, but my voice came out real quiet and shaky. 
Carmela nodded and wiped at her tears. He's the cutest dog you ever saw, she said. And smart, talk about smart. She smiled down at the picture in my hand. He can count, can you believe that? Really, Toby said. Carmela nodded, really, with his little paw, like this. She pawed the air with her hand. Maybe he got lost, Toby said. Carmela shook her head, maybe. It's just so unlike him. He knows this neighborhood real good and everybody knows him. She took the picture from me and dropped into a rocking chair. I can't figure out how that front gate got open, she said. Maybe the paper boy or something, I said. No, he just flings it up here on the porch. She looked out at the street. I've driven everywhere I can think of. I called the animal control officer. I talked to all my neighbors. I just don't know what else to do. Then she started crying real hard again, and I had to look down at my feet. I could feel Toby fidgeting beside me. Why don't you put up some signs, I said. Carmela looked up. Signs? Yeah, you know, lost dog signs. Well, stupid me, she said. Of course I should put up some signs. Me and Toby can help, I said. Right, Toby? Right, Toby grinned at Carmela. That would be great, she said, pushing herself out of the rocking chair with a grunt. Y'all want to come inside? Toby looked at me with wide eyes. We weren't supposed to go into anybody's house unless we knew them real good, but Carmela seemed okay to me. Sure, I said. Come on, Toby. I pulled on Toby's t-shirt. When we got inside, I looked around to see if Carmela's house was really as bad as it had looked from out on the porch. It was. A big lumpy couch covered with a bedspread and piled with clothes and newspapers. A coffee table littered with soda cans and dirty dishes a card table with a half-finished jigsaw puzzle. Shelves built into the wall were jammed with ratty-looking books, piles of papers, an empty fish tank, and a bowling trophy. Instead of the rose-covered carpet I had pictured, the wooden floors were bare and worn, and nearly everywhere I looked there was a dog toy, all chewed up and loved. That almost broke my heart and made me tell that Lady Carmela everything, but of course I didn't. My head was swimming with so many mixed up thoughts I couldn't get myself to say anything. Carmela shuffled over to a cluttered desk and rummaged through a drawer, then pulled out some paper. She took a red marker out of a mason jar on the desk and stared down at the paper. What should I say, she said. How about lost, little black and white dog named Willie, I said. And then put reward, Toby said. Darn, how come he had to go and say that? I was going to ease into that part, but it was too late now. Reward? Carmela looked kind of confused. I jumped in there before Toby could. Uh, yeah, I said, that's a good idea. You know, just to make sure people notice and stuff. You mean like money? Carmela stared down at the paper on the desk. Yeah, money, Toby said. I shot him a look. I wished he'd hush up and let me do the talking. Yeah, money, I said. That would make folks try real hard to find Willie. Gosh, Carmela said, I don't know. She pressed her lips together and kept staring down at the paper on the desk. Then she looked up at me and Toby. How much money, she said. $500, Toby blurted out. $500? Carmela kind of swayed a little bit like she was going to fall right over. I haven't got that kind of money. You don't, I said. She shook her head. Then how much reward could you pay, I said. Well, I was thinking maybe like, $50? $50? That wasn't nearly enough. I felt Toby watching me. My mind was racing, but before I could think of what to say, Carmela sank down onto the lumpy couch with a whoosh. Then she shook her head and said, I guess that's not very much, huh? Well, um, maybe you could get some more, I said. Carmela looked down at her lap, little beads of sweat formed on her upper lip. I could ask for some extra hours at work, she said, but that won't help much. Then she snapped her fingers. I know what, I'll see if I can borrow some money from Gertie. Yeah, Toby said. Then he added, who's Gertie? My sister. Is she the one who owns this street, I said. Carmela chuckled. Lord, no, she said. She teaches school over in Fayetteville. Then who owns this street, I said. Your daddy or somebody? What do you mean who owns this street, Carmela frowned at me. I just figured since your last name is Whitmore and Oh, Carmela said, you mean because this is Whitmore Road? I nodded. Carmela shook her head. My great granddaddy owned all this land one time. She swept her arm out toward the window. He built this house, house with his very own hands. 
brick by brick, she said, and had a big old farm that went way on out there past the highway. I looked out the window toward the highway. A bad feeling was starting to fall over me. Maybe I'd gotten this whole thing wrong. Maybe Carmela wasn't rich after all. What happened to the farm, I said. My granddaddy tried to keep it up, but it just got away from him, she said. I guess he wasn't much of a farmer. She shook her head as she gazed out the window. By the time my daddy got this house, she went on, the only thing left of the family farm was this little old yard and our name on a street sign. Maybe your daddy could give you some money, I said. Well, he died eight years ago, Carmela said, and my mama the year after that. Then Gertie moved away. She looked down at the picture of Willie she was still holding. All I got is Willie, she said. With that, she started crying again, and I was feeling so heavy, it's a wonder I didn't sink right through the floor. Suddenly, Carmela sat up straight and snapped her fingers. You know what, she said. Me and Toby waited. I am gonna call Gertie and borrow some money, she said. Shoot, I'd pay a million dollars to get Willie back if I had it. A million dollars, Toby said. She nodded, yep. Then she added, if I had it. So me and Toby watched her make the first sign. Lost, little black and white dog named Willie, $500 reward. I pressed my lips together hard to stop myself from smiling when she wrote that $500 on there. This sure was working out good, I thought. Then we all sat around the coffee table making more signs. When we had a bunch, Carmela said, there, that ought to do it. You want me to, me and Toby to put some up now, I said. Carmela frowned down at the signs in her hand. Well, I kind of feel like I ought to wait until I have the money, you know? How long is that gonna be? Not long, I hope, she said. I'll call Gertie tonight. She looked down at a dog toy on the floor, a chewed up rubber slipper. She wheezed a little bit as she bent to pick it up. I think I'll go drive around somewhere, she said, turning the slipper over and over on her lap. I can't hardly stand to think about another night without Willie. We'll come back tomorrow, okay, I said. Carmela nodded, okay. Me and Toby watched Carmela drive away, then raced back to our car to get some food scraps for Willie. I put a biscuit and a half a grilled cheese sandwich in a grocery bag, then rummaged through the stuff in the trunk till I found a towel for Willie's bed. Okay, I said, let's go. Willie sure was glad to see us. He wagged and yipped and carried on. When we got up on the porch, he jumped all over us, licking our faces and all. When I opened the grocery bag with the scraps, he liked to went crazy. He gulped everything down, then licked that bag till there wasn't one little crumb left. I put my arm around him and laid my head on top of his. I promise I'm gonna take you home, okay? I said. I pulled him onto my lap and stroked his back. He laid his head on my knee and sighed. He looks kind of sad, Toby said. I looked down at Willie. Don't be sad, little fella, I said. He lifted his doggy eyebrows and I could see what he was thinking right there on his face. Then the tears that I'd been trying to hold back for so long came spilling out. What's the matter, Georgina? Toby said. How could I answer that? Should I start with that big red F at the top of my science test today? Or should I just jump right on into how mean our daddy was to leave us in this mess? And then should I move on to how bad it felt to live in a car while my best friend went to ballet school with somebody better than me? Then I could add the part about Willie how here we were with this cute little dog who never hurt anybody, and now he was all sad and probably scared too. And then there was Carmela crying and missing her dog so much, and right in the middle of this sorry mess was me, the sorriest person there ever was. When Mama got off work that night, we drove over to Walmart. I waited in the car while her and Toby went inside. I pulled out my notebook and read my notes on how to steal a dog. It sure sounded easy when I read through it. I turned to a fresh page and wrote April 20th. Step six, when you find some signs about the lost dog, take him back to his owner, get the money, and you are done. But, I drew a big circle around the word but, then I wrote, if there are no signs, you will have to find the owner of the dog and help them make some signs. While you are doing that, you will have to practice looking nice and not like a dog thief. Remember to take real good care of the dog so he won't be hungry or sad or anything. Then, I circled the word then, and under that I wrote, you will have to wait and see what happens next. I stared down at my notes. I read the last sentence out loud. After thinking and worrying half the night, I decided that's what I'd do. Just wait and see what happened next.